How do people in the Middle East and North Africa feel about global warming, religion, foreign intervention, women's rights, healthcare migration, and more? For years, groups have sought the answers to these questions. And these answers are important because they inform political decisions like foreign policy and how humanitarian aid is distributed. They also impact economic strategies, like the ways in which companies market and create products. Last week, a new batch of these answers were released by the Arab Barometer. What is a barometer, and why do we even care about what they found? Well, what makes it special and worth a short video today is that at its core, it partners with local groups already on the ground. Surveys about people in the region conducted by people that live in the region. A quick note, last year, the coronavirus pandemic altered how these surveys were conducted. Phone calls were used to obtain answers, and also due to funding and other restrictions, the barometer was only able to concentrate on six countries. Algeria, Jordan, Lebanon, Libya, Morocco, and Tunisia. Let's take a look at a few of the major findings. First, the interviews found that Jordanians strongly supported their government's responses to the coronavirus pandemic, more so than any other country surveyed. Compare that to Lebanon, the lowest rated country of those participating, where just 38% of the respondents were positive about their government's actions to handling the pandemic. Now, initially, Jordan was actually one of the hardest hit countries in the Middle East. Even as early as November, new cases and deaths peaked. At one point, they reported nearly 6,500 new cases in just 24 hours and 91 deaths in one day. But the country acted quickly. The army set up field clinics to cope with hospital overflows. A military-enforced month-long curfew was imposed. Police patrols even fined individuals who violated mask orders in public. And when vaccines began to be administered in January, the health ministry announced drive through vaccinations. So what was the result? Today, Jordan has recorded an extremely low case fatality rate of just 1.3%. For perspective, this week France's rate was at 2.3%, China sits at 4.8%, and Egypt is at 5.7%. Jordan's rate is even lower than that in the United States and the United Kingdom. So this month, while a second wave of the virus surges across the region, many countries are faced with additional lockdowns, Jordan is moving in the opposite direction. They've begun shortening curfew hours and reopening schools. Second, while most countries surveyed said they have freedom to express their opinions, less than half of those in Lebanon agreed that was the case. Moroccans and Algerians expressed the highest sense of freedoms. Tunisia and Jordan were close behind but only 49% of Lebanese people interviewed felt a freedom to express their thoughts, and that uneasiness extended to the media. Lebanese felt the least amount of press freedom. Finally, survey respondents made it clear that they prefer to have China in the region over other foreign powers. This all comes as the U.S. is disengaged from the region's political and economic decisions. As early as 2013, Washington made it clear they no longer wanted to play a leading role. I will not put American boots on the ground in Syria. I will not pursue an open-ended action like Iraq or Afghanistan. The Trump administration doubled down on that promise. Great nations do not fight endless wars. It withdrew troops from key conflicts, departed nuclear deals, and cut back on millions of humanitarian aid. The move left a foreign leadership void that countries scrambled to fill. Trump's support for Israel, certainly his move of the embassy, and you know his overall um, attitude towards the region with the, the so-called Muslim ban and things like that have been you know perceived very negatively. So we have seen a decline over time. You know, America has never been the most popular power in the region, but certainly right now it's it's a time that his favorability is quite low. Some countries were more loud than others to claim the space. Think about Russia and Syria. And French President Emmanuel Macron walking through Beirut, flocked by media after the August port explosion. But behind the scenes, China has slowly and quietly built inroads across the region for decades. It has involved leaders on its Belt and Road Initiative. It has provided coronavirus-related relief to governments, and it has become a major player in the energy sector. In 2015, China became the biggest global importer of crude oil, with almost half of its supply coming from the Middle East. So it wasn't necessarily shocking that survey respondents preferred the engagement of China to the United States. Now all of this is without even discussing how the countries engage in the region, with Beijing being more of an economic player and Washington more involved on the political and military front. There's a whole video by itself. 
it does seem that China as a non-colonial power, as a new actor in the region, as one who's coming in, you know, in the last few years particularly, has at least people are open towards China, uh, much more so than they are of a, a power like the United States. Okay, that's your quick explanation of the new results from the Arab Barometer. I invite you to take a look at the results yourself at their website. As always, for more reading on the region, be sure to visit our website at www.al-monitor.com. Until next week, stay safe, everyone. I'm Joe Snow.